What's up and welcome to K Plus Gaming Corner. And in this Division 2 video, I'm sharing some tips and tricks as well as explaining your character's proficiency and expertise levels. This was something that took me a while to figure out on my own since there doesn't seem to be too much information out there and I figured it would be helpful to others to share and explain how this works as well as some efficient ways to level up and get your maximum expertise as fast as possible without wasting too many resources. Starting with and explaining proficiency, each gear set, weapons, named items, each brand set, exotic items, even your skills will all have their own proficiency ranking starting from zero if you've never used them and will go up to a maximum proficiency of 10. And these get leveled up pretty much from playing the game, killing enemies, running around and doing your thing as long as those items are equipped on your character. If you want to make your drones and turrets or your sticky bombs or your exotic Scorpio more effective, you need to get those proficiency rankings up to 10 and then you can begin increasing those expertise levels, but I'll get to the expertise in just a bit. For the gear, it's important to note that the brands and the named items are different categories and get leveled up separately. For example, if you're leveling up the Brazos gear, that's going to be different from leveling up your Picaro's holster, even though technically the Picaro is a Brazos. Same would go for a Badger Tough piece versus a Zero Fs. You get the idea. A fast way to level up the brands as well as the named gear sets is to simply have three or four pieces equipped at the same time, which you'll usually be doing anyway, especially with the named gear since you'll want to make sure you're unlocking those four piece bonus talents and you'll be at level 10 proficiency with those before you know it. When it comes to the weapons, that's a bit different as running around with each weapon until they hit 10 proficiency will take way too long and if you're like me, we ain't got that kind of time to waste. In my opinion, the best way to increase weapon proficiencies is to donate duplicate versions of those items as junk. And this also works with the named gear like the Matador or the Force Multiplier. This was definitely something I didn't realize you could do, but it's by far the most efficient way to take that FAMAS or test subject to a 10. What you'll do is mark the items in your inventory that you'd like to donate as junk. Come to the White House and see Emma Richards at the recalibration station. Go to the expertise menu and select donate as junk and those pieces will be turned over in exchange for proficiency. Another way you could upgrade proficiency is to individually go into each piece, select research and then select donate materials on Xbox that's the left trigger and you'll see the menu for the different resources you can donate in exchange for that proficiency. This wouldn't be my recommended method though, as upgrading this way can get really expensive and those valuable resources like polycarbonate, titanium or printer filament can be put to much better use in other ways, so don't waste your materials. When it comes to raising the proficiency ranking of your skills, the best way is kinda just to keep using the skill you want to upgrade until it gets to 10. There's really no way around it unless you really did want to put those resources towards it, but in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's really worth it. Just my opinion though, feel free to do as you please. One of the best methods of farming for duplicate materials to use towards donating for proficiency is definitely going to be running those Pentco power plant countdowns. You can always select your targeted loot to whatever you're looking for, in my case I'm switching between shotguns and marksman rifles at the moment, and each countdown if done right will leave you with 50 to 100 weapons and gear items you can now mark as junk and take to the White House. I'd recommend doing those countdowns on challenging as it's the fastest way to match make and join a group, plus you'll only be getting legendary loot, which is what you'll need since purples and below don't count and that's what you're pretty much going to be getting on normal and hard difficulties. Heroic countdowns have a higher difficulty and a much higher chance of something going wrong where your whole group fails to complete the mission, so I'd avoid those headaches altogether. Once you have those proficiency levels up to 10, now you can start looking at expertise and here's where you're really going to start to improve your gear and take your character to the next level. Your expertise level can go up to a maximum of 21. I'm currently at 8 working my way to 9 and that number will basically be the max level you can increase your gear to. For the weapons, each expertise level is equal to 1 extra percent of weapon damage, up to 21%. For the gear, that's 1 extra percent of total armor, calculated for your current armor stat up to 20% extra armor, and for the skills, it depends. A striker drone would have the potential for 21% extra damage, a banshee pulse you'd be increasing the disorient duration by 21%, and each other skill you'd pretty much be making it better and more effective the higher you can get that expertise. 
raising those expertise levels can get pretty expensive so you want to always be farming for those resources and that includes your shade calibration field recon data and even those exotic components once you get to the higher levels of expertise on your way to 21. You'll also want to keep an eye on your maximum expertise level as that's another thing I didn't realize when I first got into endgame activities. Each expertise level will require 200 points in order to advance to the next tier level and each point is equal to one proficiency level. So if you're raising the proficiency level of a mantis for example, taking it from level 6 to 7 will give you one expertise point. Now, once you get that mantis to the maximum 10 proficiency, you won't get any more expertise points for that item and will then have to start looking at other weapons or gear and raise those proficiencies and keep it going. I find this mechanic to be very interesting as it encourages you to keep things fresh by equipping different items all the time and not stagnating or using only the same two skills or the same weapons. It gives you a lot of incentive to try new things. Once again, Countdown is my best recommendation here to help get you to those higher expertise levels since you'll have so much loot to donate and each donation raises your proficiency which is in turn giving you those expertise points and raising your expertise level. When it comes to each item and accumulating enough resources to actually do the upgrades, that'll be a whole nother video since there's a few ways you can go about doing that, including having an alternate character and completing the Warlords of New York expansion to get that second character, the Aaron Keener watch. I'm currently working on that now, so we'll have another video for you guys once I have that all sorted out in terms of the most efficient way to do that, so definitely look out for that coming in the near future. That's all for now, just wanted to quickly share some tips and tricks when it comes to maximizing the potential of your characters, making you much stronger, and also giving you an edge when it comes to PvP. If you liked this content, make sure to hit that like button, it's really appreciated and helps the channel a lot. If you'd like to see more and stay tuned to what's coming, or you'd like to know whenever I'm streaming live, be sure to subscribe and hit those notification bells. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then... Peace.